Hey guys, what is up? It is the Fast Break Report here bringing you guys another vlog. Well, I had another parlay today get completely fucked. Uh, thank you, JB Bickerstaff, for not in, for not even trying to win the game against Charlotte. Uh, uh, they, they got behind, and I expected them to put Jared Allen back in, and I missed a $400 parlay like I bet 25 bucks the payout was like 375 and I missed it by one fucking free throw if Jared Allen would have shot one free throw and fucking made it I would have hit for 375 or 378 but either way that's not why we're here I want to talk about the Pacers and their ridiculous win against the Atlanta Hawks because uh, this was a fun game to watch but also like we finally secured our playoff seeding uh, the Indiana Pacers are now the sixth seed the Milwaukee Bucks are now the third seed and that's who will be playing in the first round of the playoffs now uh, because the Bucks are the th the higher seed they're going to get home court advantage uh, like we we kind of figured that uh, but here's the thing right I'm kind of glad we got the Milwaukee Bucks and not the New York Knicks because we at least won our series during the regular season against the Bucks. They only beat us one time in the regular season. Now, I understand they were going through coaching changes and all this other stuff, but even though they have Doc Rivers as their head coach, Doc Rivers has not been good about getting teams to the to the NBA Finals. Uh, so I like our chances with that. Obviously, the Damian Lillard, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo pairing has not worked out the way they had anticipated, which is in our favor. So I kind of like that. You know, as a team, the New York Knicks, even without Julius Randle, are a better team, like a more, they have better chemistry than the Milwaukee Bucks do, it seems. And even though the Knicks are missing Julius Randle, they're a very gritty team. And we don't play well against gritty teams, if you haven't noticed. Teams that like to play physical, teams that are really good on defense. Like we struggle against the fucking Chicago Bulls, and they're the same type of team. They, they, they're just a gritty team. And I, I'm kind of glad we're not playing them because Dante DiVincenzo has taken leaps and strides I never thought I'd ever fucking see. And Jalen Brunson has arrived. I, I'm just going to call it what it is, man. Jalen Brunson has arrived. The dude is putting up 40 points a game to close out the season. I mean, I don't know what more you could really ask for out of a player from the Knicks, but it's very obvious that when Julius Randle went down... They gave the keys to, to the car to Jalen Brunson and said, take us there. And he has, in fact, done that so well that it, it's it's actually pretty amazing that they're the second seed in the East without Julius Randle. So the Knicks have arrived. I'm going to call it what it is, man. As much as I hate that, you know, they're our rival and they're playing well, uh, you have to respect them, you know. Uh, as for our game against Atlanta, what a fucking game. I mean, like, this was a game where... I didn't expect Miles Turner to to absolutely go fucking bonkers, but he did. I think he had what like what, 32 points, 12 rebounds, and four blocks. I could be wrong about that, but I know Miles. Yeah, Miles Turner had 31 points, 12 rebounds, and four blocks, and we fucking beat the brakes off these dudes. It was 157 to 115. Atlanta stood no chance, and you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. I was worried about this game because we started out really well, like. We came out, like, Miles Turner came out the gate. Him and Pascal Siakam just came out the gate firing on all, on all cylinders. Then we got into the second quarter after we were up by, like, 20, 20, 21 points in the first quarter or something like that. I Actually, I think it was, like, 15. We scored 50 points in the first quarter, and in the second quarter, they, we just let them back in the game. And... This team has a history of starting off games hot and ending them cold. This was like, we almost, we let them back in it. And then in like the third quarter going, end of the third quarter going into the fourth, we just, we, we got out in front of them again. And once we got out and got out and got ahead, there was no looking back. So I will say this. It was nice, man. I was, I was very, very pleased to see what the future holds in this because I feel like this is what we've been waiting for all year. What we got out of Siakam and Miles Turner, I think is what we've been looking for all year. You know, as far as, you know, our, our trio so far of how it's going to work with Miles, Pascal, and Tyrese Halliburton. Now, granted, Tyrese didn't, you know, he had an okay game. You know, he didn't make a single three-pointer, but he still put up 12 points, 13 assists, two rebounds, shot five of 10 from the floor, only had two turnovers. Um, Tyrese is just not shooting the three well. Uh, I, I'm going to call it what it is. He's not shooting the three well, but 
It's nice to see the longest tenured player on our roster finally showing up. And for once, I'm going to say this and don't anybody get mad, but it's nice to see Miles Turner finally playing like a fucking center and not playing like a total pussy. You know, like, and I, I hate to say it that way, but for the longest time, I was like, bro, 12 and 7 is not going to get it done. If you're going to be the center on this team and we're already bad at defense, like, I understand Miles Turner is the last line of defense, but Miles Turner is officially playing like a legitimate center. He's like, this was the best showing I think I've ever seen from Miles Turner. And that's saying a lot. This is a dude who's been in the league for nine years and I've been waiting on like, I, I've just, I've been waiting for Miles to break out of his fucking shell and it seems like it's finally happened. Now, granted the three point shot has dropped this year to like 33%, 34%, which is not good, but in the past couple games, Miles Turner has had it going and it's just, it's nice to see, man. It's nice to see Miles finally emerge as a leader on this team and Siakam, Siakam is going to get paid. Halliburton's already our point guard of the future. Like, it's just nice. It's nice to see what the future holds because TJ McConnell, TJ McConnell played his ass off today. Dude, TJ McConnell was fucking bleeding and still out there just, you know, being the fucking dog that we know him as, you know? So like, this was a good game. I mean, Halliburton, yes, 12, the, the thing I like about these, these types of games where Miles and Siakam play well, it's like Tyrese Halliburton knows that like, you know, I can come out here and just get a double double and it it might be good enough to win. Now, granted, we've seen it where Tyrese Halliburton is capable in the second half of just going fucking nuclear. Normally, the way Tyrese Halliburton plays is he spends the first half facilitating, getting his guys involved. And then in the second half is when he starts doing his scoring. That has been, for whatever reason, since the All-Star break, that has changed. And that's mostly because Tyrese Halliburton is not shooting the three well since the All-Star break. I don't know what happened since the All-Star break, but ever since that hamstring injury, man, Tyrese Halliburton just hasn't been the same guy. And Doug McDermott played well. TJ McConnell had 17-8. and eight. I mean, Jarris Walker got some burn. Jarris Walker came out. Uh, he had eight points, three of five, two of three from three. Um... You know, you really can't ask for much more. Andrew Nemhard played well. Um, Jalen Smith played well. It, it, I mean, it was just the the shit we needed out of the guys on our, our bench. We had Ben Shepard played well, 3 of 6. I mean, whole squad came out and took this game seriously. Aaron Neesmith was pretty good. Um, so, like, honestly, it's just... I was just happy to see Miles and Siakam, like, work. You know, like, and and what I mean by that is for the longest time, I was like, you know, is this going to be a case where like Pascal Siakam overshadows Miles and Miles just falls into obscurity as like an eight and eight guy, but that has not happened. Granted, Tyrese Halliburton's making significantly more money than Miles Turner, and it would be nice to see, uh... It would be nice to see our trio, like, I I would like to see the numbers I got out of Miles Turner and Pascal Siakam tonight... Along with Pat, uh, Tyrese Halliburton scoring maybe 20 points a game or 19 points a game. Like, I, I that would be ideal, but we we beat the fucking brakes off Atlanta tonight. And Atlanta had no answers. Atlanta couldn't defend us. Um, granted, you know, it, it seemed like we really couldn't defend Atlanta either. They still scored 115 points. But we, we got what we needed out of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, the, this playoff series against the Bucks is going to be entertaining. Tyrese Halliburton's playing in his first playoff ever. Uh, so we're, we're a young team. It sucks that we don't have Ben Matherin, but this is a team that needed this experience. I, I I'm going to be honest, man. This team is, looks very, very promising. Even Doug McDermott today had 15 points. I mean, Doug McDermott's a guy who I know we got to replace Buddy Heald and, I have my own opinions on what's going to happen with Buddy Heald. I have a feeling Buddy Heald, like even though he plays for the 76ers, um, I think Buddy Heald is maybe going to see that uh, the the free agent market is not what he thinks it is for him, and maybe he finds his way back to Indy. I, I I don't know. Like I know that's maybe a wild take, and it's like no, we traded him. He's he's not coming back. But he likes playing with Tyrese, and on top of it, it seems like ever since we traded him, Tyrese just hasn't been the same player. I don't know why. But I feel like maybe that has something to do with it as well. I doubt it, but, you know, maybe it's still in the back of Tyrese's mind. I don't know. But all I'm saying is we at least put on a good show. You know what I'm saying? Like, for the last game of the regular season, we came out, we took care of business, and free agents are watching. 
Just saying, you know, like DeMar, DeMar DeRozan's an unrestricted free agent this year. Um, I think Alex Caruso's an unrestricted free agent. And Alex Caruso, if you saw that Knicks-Bulls game, that, that game was fun to watch also. That was a game that came down to the fucking final shot as, as well. Alex Caruso was a dog in that game. But it's just the idea, man, like the, the only place for this team to go is up. And you know what? I honestly, like... Being that we're playing the Bucks now, we have a legitimate shot at getting to the second round. Um, if we played the Knicks, I really wasn't sure about that. Um, you know, the the Knicks, like I said, are a really gritty team. We just don't play well against gritty teams. We don't play well against teams that are physical and are, are good about getting up in us and, and stopping shit. But... Which is something that does need to be fixed. We do need to get better at defense. I will say that. Like, I want, I just want expectations for for this team to be realistic. Like, I know we're playing the Bucks in the first round, and there's, you know, I like our chances against the Bucks way more than I do against the Knicks. But if we lose in the second round, okay, understand, like, this season was still a win. Granted, it would have been nice to see us win some of those games against teams below 500, because really this team should be a top three seed in the East. I'm going to call it what it is. Like, our record should be better than it is. Uh, but the, like, if we would have won just half of those games that we lost to below 500 teams during the regular season, I think we lost 14 games in the regular season to teams below 500. If we win just half of those games, we're in the, we're a top, we're a top three seed in the East. Um, so I think we have a, we have a very good showing. Um, I, I think this team has a, a lot of growth ahead of it, but you know, Ben Matherin coming back next year is going to be big. Andrew Nemhard is, even though he pisses me off from time to time, like, I'm not going to lie. Andrew Nemhard has, has moments where I'm like, that's, like, he's the best defender on our team. He's a great player. Then he has moments where he tries to play hero ball, and I can't fucking stand him. I have a love-hate relationship with Andrew Nemhard at the moment, but... It's just the idea, regardless of what I think about Andrew Nemhard, this team has a very, very bright future. And uh, I'm just excited to watch him in the playoffs. You know, we haven't been to the playoffs in what feels like forever. Uh, and, you know, it's nice to see that we were able to get back to this. Granted, I still think we need to we need to find a way to play defense without fouling the ever-living shit out of people. Uh, but, you know, I, I can't really... I, I can't help that, you know, maybe they bring back Dan Burke or, or somebody like that, but uh, I, I think this team's going to land another free agent, like, I'm just going to call this right now, like, a, a lot of teams around the league who are blowing it up, I want to say, like, I don't think Chicago's blowing it up, but I think Chicago wanted to try and keep their team together, but I think DeRozan's going to leave, and if DeRozan leaves, uh, Alex Caruso may leave, like, they're, they're a team that's probably going to blow it up in the offseason, season. I just feel like if, you know, they're, they're trying to trade Zach Levine, like, if we can get our hands on a guy like a DeMar DeRozan, um, I really, really like our chances. Like, I understand Paul George is maybe the goal, but it's just the idea, like, even if we got a DeMar DeRozan, that's not the end of the world. DeMar DeRozan is still a very, very good player, and he's still a, a capable defender, so, especially in the second half of this year, if you if you watch DeMar DeRozan at any point in the second half of this year, you can see he's still he's still he's still a baller. You know what I'm saying? He had like a, a four or five game stretch where he he was scoring almost 40 points a game. I mean, the, the guy is still a capable player, but a lot of work to do, man. I'm just gonna say that a lot of work to do. Today's win was very telling. I think about this team. I think when when Miles is hot, you know, like and and he's got it going, he's got it going. You know, I, I rarely, you guys know, I've been a big Miles hater for a long time, but Miles showed the fuck out in this game. Miles Miles did what I've been expecting out of him for the past, like, set, I would say easily four to five years. I've been expecting Miles to take that leap forward. I've been expecting Miles to become the leader of this team. And in a, in, 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 in a game like this where we absolutely needed to fucking win to avoid the play-in tournament, he has a game like this, 31-12 and 12 with four blocks. I mean, you can't ask for more. And uh, as you guys, I mean, you know, I've been very, very critical of Miles for, for years now. And 
it was it was just nice. I I feel I feel a whole lot better about bringing Miles Turner back now. I I will say that you know he was, and and the best part is towards the end of this season, it seems like he's getting more and more consistent with the things that he's good. I mean he's banging down low. He dunked on Evan Mobley, Mobley against the Cavs. I mean Miles is finally playing like a true center, and we're noticing it. Granted. We did get fucking out rebounded by the Cavs, but and we we still have issues with rebounding. But this team is fun to watch, and it seems like everybody enjoys being on this team. So I expect Siakam back. I expect all you know. My, I think Miles is going to get resigned at at the trade deadline this upcoming year. Um, I also think T.J. McConnell is going to get resigned. Like if T.J. McConnell doesn't come back, bro, that's that's a big hit to this team. You know, for a long time, people made fun of me for for having T.J. McConnell as my favorite player for a while. You know, it became, it was T.J. McConnell, then it was Jalen Smith, now it's Tyrese Halliburton, but, you know, the Siakam trade worked out as well. A lot of people were like, "Eh, I don't know, like we play slower and we're not doing this or we're not doing that. Siakam has saved our season. Like, I don't think people realize that if we don't trade for Pascal Siakam, there's a strong chance we're in the plan right now as a ninth or 10th seed. Like that's, and I'm not joking. Like that's how good Pascal Siakam has been for this team. And I like the idea that Siakam down the stretch seems like a guy that we can go to as well. But uh, Giannis is going to be back. Just so you guys know, Giannis will be back for the playoffs and the Milwaukee Bucks are very good. This, I uh, granted losing Drew Holiday was a big deal for them, but they still have Brooke Lopez. Um, Chris Middleton, they still have Damian Lillard, they still have Giannis Antetokounmpo, and we know how Damian Lillard plays during the playoffs, and Giannis is is capable of that as well, so gonna be a fun series, I can't wait to watch it, hope you guys enjoyed this video, tell me what you guys think down below in the comment section below, I like helps me out, subscribe if you guys want to see more on the Fast Break Report, and I'm out of this motherfucker, peace guys.